this, uh, with this idea of, we, we look at some ideas of the, the different passages that talk about the Father, that talk about the Son, talk about the Holy Spirit, uh, and we see passages talking about the one God, uh, and then we're looking at the idea uh, of the, the three in one. How, how, how on earth does that, that make sense? Uh, but the, the thing is, it's in the scriptures, so this is one particular one we looked at last week. Uh, the, these three bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. And there are three of our witness on earth, the Spirit, the Water, and the Blood. And these three agree uh, in one. So, uh, you have the, the scripture there saying definitely three in one, even though the Old Testament in Deuteronomy says there's one God. So whatever that means, whatever we, we eventually assimilate that into our brain, and some of us will continue to, to fight with the rest of our lives, uh, at least we, we know that they're there. Now some aspects of life of Jesus, while he was, uh, the Philippian letter says, he limited himself, he took on himself the form of a servant. So he divested himself of, of much that he could be true humanity for us. And in that role of humanity as, as, the, as the Son and being our example, we often find him communicating with the Father. Uh, and this is uh, the John chapter 10 verse 30, he says, I and the Father are one. And this passage, the Jews recognized that despite Jesus being on earth, being a physical person, he was actually claiming to be at one with God. Before Abraham was, I am, he says. Uh, so it's not just, uh, uh, I, I, I thought about things, or I was, I was thinking about things before Abraham. He says, before Abraham was, I am, and he used the Greek, Egoemi, which is the, the uh, Hebrew trans or the Greek translation of the Hebrew, <coughs> I am, that you find in, in Exodus chapter 3, uh, where God says, uh, I am. And so they understood exactly what Jesus meant. There's many people who actually say Jesus never claimed to be God. And yet, uh, this passage here, the implications uh, are, are, are there. Uh, the Hebrews were stoning him for blasphemy. And another passage actually says, you being a man, claim to be God. Well, goodness, if Jesus never claimed to be God, what did they stoned him for? So, I mean, the, the, uh, the people who say these things just don't... Uh, either don't want to know what the scripture says or have a, a different agenda from the scriptures. So how can the Father, the Christ and the Holy Spirit be free and one at the same time? The Bible emphatically proclaims there's one God. The Bible also proclaims that, uh, that are, they have the same nature, three have the same nature. It also proclaims that there are three distinct individuals. So whatever that means uh, and however we deal with that, uh, we, we still struggle with it. And so, um, that's right, that's the issue with that, okay? Mm -hmm. um, I said that last week, didn't I? Uh, the same word one doesn't mean, it mean one flesh. Uh, husband and wife are separate persons, God says of one flesh. How is the husband and wife both one, and yet described as, we know they're separate, and yet they are one in harmony with one another. One in purpose, agreement in life. They're meant to be one family. They, the man and woman leaves their parents and are meant by God to be uh, one unit together in harmony. Uh, even the, the idea of Adam and Eve, when Eve was made, uh, Eve was made fit uh, to, to match or to um, complement uh, Adam. Uh, and as most uh, people know, uh, men and women are slightly different, both in their thinking and in their physical aspects. But they're meant to complement one another, they're meant to strengthen one another uh, and, uh, and build, uh, help each other uh, build to their, their fullness and protect it. Obviously, in our day and age, quite often it fails, uh, either because we don't want to put in the work to make it work or, or all sorts of other complicated reasons. But in reality, in God's mind, He intended it to be a harmonious thing. Uh, that we get the best out of each other and build each other up in a, in a, in a common uh, purpose. Uh, this church is described as one, just as the Godhead is one. Jesus said, I'm not praying for these alone, but also for future believers who come to me because of the temp testimony of these. My prayer is for all of them, that they will be of one heart and one mind, just as you and I are, Father. That just as you are in me and I am in you, so they will be in us. The world will believe you sent me, I have given them the glory you gave me, the glorious unity of being one as we are. I and them and you and me all being perfected into one, so that the world will know you sent me and will understand that you love them just as much as you love me. So, 
over time, we, we try and think about different ways of trying to describe this three in one, and it's not easy. All right. Uh, we're used to uh, if, if the males around us, and maybe some females around us, uh, are familiar with the idea of the old three in one oil. Uh, sometimes we use the concept of deity, express as three in one, uh, and it's 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 good but it's bad. Whatever image that we have in our mind, whatever we think about, it's got limitations, uh, and that's the problem. Whatever uh, you, you come up with to describe as three in one. It's got limitations to the actual analogy, all right? So it's helpful, but it can also be unhelpful. As there is three in one oil, or three leaf clover, which is an individual uh, stem, but they all share this, or an individual leaf, but they all share the stem, stem or root of being. Uh, you know, there's, we've all sorts of stuff like that. Probably the best one, I like it, the one most of all, is usually H2O. Um, there's one body, one spirit, just as you're called, one hope when you're called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and, all and in all and through all, Ephesian writer says. Uh, so, if you put it in a triangle sense, and you've got God the Father, and you've got God the Son, and you've got the Holy Spirit, in the centre, what they all are, even if you look at them as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, separate, they are all deity or godhood, the part of the God family, if you want to put it like that. Uh, and we use H2O in a similar, similar type of thing. H2O is the basic component uh, of the, the uh, uh, what's the word, the, the essence of what uh, all the different forms are seen, H2O. Uh, so we, we're familiar with it in water and liquid form. Uh, we're familiar with it in uh, a ice, the solid form, and with every time you make a nice cup of tea, we're familiar with it uh, in the steam form, okay? Basically, it is all H2O, and, and yet on a, on, a, on a bench, you can have uh, a jar of water, a lump of ice, and steam coming from the kettle. So you all get the different things uh, in different atmospheres, uh, different presentations of itself, uh, and yet it's all uh, from the same common root, if you like. Now, that's where the limitations are in. Uh, we're all human beings, so we're all human, of the human family. But we're all different. Despite being all different, we're all the same. We're all human beings. So, whatever you want to describe this as, it's, you struggle to get the, the perfect analogy for it. But it is... Uh, Deity, the Godhood, uh, the three personalities of the Godhood, uh, are seen in the Bible working together in harmony, uh, but they have a unique closeness. I don't know if that's helpful. There's one illustration to that Paul uses uh -huh. to the Ephesians, to the uh, Thessalonians. May your whole body, soul, soul. and spirit, yep. be, uh, individual. The body is just yep. conscious. Yep. The soul is self-conscious, the spirit is God-conscious. And, and that's, I mean, that's somebody, somebody once said, well, you know, show me the Father, Son, Holy how can you, how can you have three uh, gods and yet be one God? Uh, okay, you know, in a human being, when you look at human being, usually you only see the, the physical aspect. But actually we're more than just physical beings, uh, we have a soul. Uh, I, I think I said yeah, ages ago, the Japanese actually, uh, had dead well, people who are dying, they put them in a special bed frame which is on a on a weigh, a, a massive weighing machine because they wanted to see has the soul got a weight? You know, can you can you actually see at the point of death that the, the soul leaving the body and the, the weight changing because the soul weighs a bit more? Uh, you know, scientists I mean the, the evolutionists are quite happy to say that, that all we are is a bunch of chemicals. They could break down our body and stick us up in, a, I can't remember how many, I mean, 18 or 36 jars on a, on a, on a shelf. Mm -hmm. And there's a human being, all right? Which jar do you bring life out of? Where is life? What is life? We don't know. When Jesus stayed away from Bethany, yep. when Lazarus died, for four days entirely, because, because the Jews believed that for four days the soul remained. Hung around? Yes. Yep. So, so they believed in something apart from the body. That's right. Uh, uh, this is this, uh, a good uh, <coughs> equation that, that uh, 
somebody who dies um, if the soul gives the soul enough time to get away uh, otherwise the person could be brought back to life and it's interesting in our, in our um, a lot of studies being done with with people who are near death and die in the moment uh, and, and trying to just exactly determine when are, is a person dead they found new evidence of people who have been in comas uh, that, that actually when they decided to switch off the machine if they had the sophisticated machinery they're using now and the test they're making now they probably wouldn't have switched off the machine because they, they weren't uh, technically there but they couldn't communicate they were doing a coma and they couldn't communicate and there is uh, uh, there are certain medicines or I wouldn't call them medicines there are certain uh, uh, chemicals that you can actually take that will put your body into a uh, a, 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 an unconscious state, if you like, where practically no um, real sense of, of life is there, and yet uh, they can then bring you into that. Uh, so it's very difficult sometimes to get it to, to the point where the, the discovering is more and more difficult to determine exactly when a person is dead. Uh, and that's why they've got all these two, two doctors come in, all that type of stuff, to make sure that uh, and, and obviously we've had the horrific stories of some people being carried off in the coffin and suddenly they're knocking from the inside, let me out of here because the, even the doctors have said they were dead, they've got to be ready to be uh, uh, buried uh, and, and suddenly they come back out of it and all their bodily functions uh, come back again so we, uh, that's not it, and some people actually <coughs> now they've got some very dusty coffins you can buy with telephones in them just in case we did have a lady in the church who died twice and then she died a third time and when she was in a coffin they noticed a tear running down her face Is that right? and they realised she was alive and they were taking her to be buried wow. that's how close it was because wow. she came back to yeah. life I was so reading only yesterday strange you should bring that up but the uh, a neuro uh, surgeon and, and they, they said no no one in the world knows more about the working of the mind than he and he is absolutely asserted that the after that the out of the body experiences are real and there's no way in which they can attribute that to some kind of chemical. function or, or chemical function of the mind yeah. absolutely certain he's convinced that there's something beyond the body that exists. Yeah. Um, yeah, David, actually, David Harland, because he likes to, he plows around the internet a lot, he likes to send me snippets of, of science, and, and Terry does the same, sends me snippets of science in my email, say, have a look at this, have a look at this. Uh, and uh, he, he said about six, seven months ago, he said there was a bunch of scientists who were uh, saying that they, they really thought now that you could identify the fact that we have something that lives right, out yeah. after death. So I'd probably look at the same right, thing. There's no, there's no, there is no, new, uh, there's no uh, brain specialist in the world who knows more about it than he does. Yeah, yeah. And very interesting, I mean, a lot of things happen when a person is ill, uh, and the chemicals in the brain do cause off. I mean, Isabel, I think, was it Isabel? I know there's some other people that I've known in the same situation. When, uh, when they're being given a little bit of heroin, and you may identify with some of that, when you give a little bit of heroin, uh, they actually, in bed, they think they're convinced of morphine. Morphine, 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 I had a friend who died, he was about 42, died of cancer, and one of the things he, he told me one day when I went to see him, he says, I, I, I was chasing the doctor yesterday, and, and he went all the way up, she was in a car, apparently, going up this, and she lived in the village, and he followed her all the way home, because she, he thought she's killing me, mm -hmm. and he was convinced that she had he'd actually managed to get out of bed, and uh, chased her all the way down to this village, but even though she was in the car, uh, because she, he thought she was going to kill him. So lots of things happen with chemicals. Uh, but it, uh, despite that, there's also some other, as this thing, the neurologists uh, uh, are, are getting to, to a little bit uh, moving the borders about what they do know and, and, and what, they, what they can be absolutely certain of. Um, so, uh, 
In this one, uh, you've got the Father, Justice, the Son, Love, and the Spirit and Power. In reality, all of them are Justice, Love, and Power. All in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You can't say uh, God the Father demonstrates one aspect, which he does, really, really claims for it. He calls for justice, uh, and the Son demonstrates his love in, in being the sacrifice, and then the Holy Spirit works with by, by uh, uh, raising from the dead. So there's elements of power demonstrated in the scriptures that talk about, the, uh, about the, the Holy Spirit. There's also elements of power demonstrated in Jesus. There's elements of power demonstrated in God the Creator. So you can't, you can't take one part of God and, 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 and tear him apart from all the rest and say, uh, one of these hasn't got what the others have. Because as God, as deity, and, and the reality, they all share the, these uh, abilities. So three and one is, is us trying to explain a difficult concept. But three and one is okay for oil, but the deed is more than uh, this. They are three beings in perfect unity and in harmony. Okay, so you can use the analogy, but remember, the analogy doesn't go far enough. It's only helpful. Not just three personalities in one being. And we talk about humankind, mankind, and we talk about deity, uh, humanity and the Godhead. So there's, uh, we are, are so much less than God is. Uh, the angels at, at the moment are so much more than we are, but eventually we'll be higher than angels uh, according to uh, some aspects of like for Hebrews and stuff like that. So there's a difference in essence. Uh, we'll never under, I don't think we'll ever understand it. Uh, we've just got to talk about it and, and say that's what it is. Okay, That's what we know. Uh, what you do with that is up to you in the rest of your life. So three divine persons make up one Godhead or deity in the same way as all humans make up uh, one humanity. Father, the Son, this is a, what you call a Venn diagram, I believe, uh, where you have three separate circles, you bring them together, and where they all cross over, they all overlap at that point. So they're all equal at that point. Uh, okay, God is a Father. Uh, the architect of the universe, he planned all things, and his role as we see him as the Father, he's the one who plans everything. Um, <clears throat> the Son is the one that created the things planned, or uh, put into action the things planned by the Father. Uh, as seen in John 1, in the beginning was the Word, the Word is with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. There's lots of passages in the Old Testament talking about God the Creator, God the Father as the Creator. So they're all involved in creation, but in our understanding of things, or in God's revelation of Himself to us, He wants us to understand there are different roles played, uh, just as there are different roles played with man and women in the, in the, in the church, if you will. It's a similar concept. Uh, and the Holy Spirit is the lawgiver or organizer. Uh, the earth was that form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. The Spirit of God moved over the face of the waters, it says. The Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, bring, giving the, giving the natural law, bringing the, uh, the, some, sort of, um, uh, some sort of uniformity and, and um, a organization, organization into, into existence. So the Father is the, the, seen as the planning, uh, the Jesus is seen as the uh, getting into motion, uh, in Him we live and move however it may be, uh, and the Holy Spirit organizing, sorting things out. In the same, uh, in the New Testament, we have some other uh, similar ideas. The Father planned the New Testament church. It says, to the intent that now and to the principalities and powers and heavenly places might be known by the church, the manifold, the many uh, full wisdom of God. That's uh, Frank likes this one because the word manifold. Uh, is like the idea well, of the that, that is wrong. That might, be, that might be known through the church. It's not by in the Greek. Okay. It's not, it, it God, it's not God's heavenly power being made known by the church. It's God's heavenly power being made through the church to the to the, the, the heavenly beings. Okay. That's what the passage says. All right. I don't know what, what translation that. Uh, probably an easy reading one. No, that must be too easy. Too easy. Okay. <laughs> okay, made known through or through, by, the through the church. That the church is a demonstration that, that the angels look on in wonder. That the, okay. that, that, that the manifold 
which, which God, God, God demonstrated the, the, the in, actually it means the inscrutable wisdom of God yep. is actually made visible by what he's done in the church and, and the principalities and powers in heavenly places are amazed ok, now we've got a few other passages that actually have a similar idea yeah. um, in which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord so right. God, was, God was in the beginning he planned it, he purposed it and it was brought to fruition as Jesus brought into existence the church and the mystery, that which has been in the Old Testament concealed is revealed through his working in the church today uh, more or less, okay. Uh, the son built it, created. I also say to thee, and thou art Peter upon this rock, I will build my church. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So it says, My church, Jesus says, My church. I'm going to build my church. And uh, so that spirit was in the mind of God. Uh, and the Holy Spirit gives the law and the word. How be when he came, the Spirit of Jesus come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself. Whatever he shall hear, he shall speak, and he will show you the things to come. Okay? Uh, earlier in that translation, you've also got, uh, he will uh, testify of me. So, Jesus is the one that the Holy Spirit is to focus our attention on. Because Jesus is the one that God and the flesh has come to take our place, to die in our place, to redeem us. And the Holy Spirit's job is to remind us of what Jesus has done, and also what Jesus will continue to do in and through us uh, in the future. So you get all three working together. And Deuteronomy, this is the problem passage, it's for some really. The hero is well, the Lord our God is one Lord. We're one in unity, one in purpose, and one in plan. United and, and one as in united, united in purpose, united in plan. Almighty God works through His Son, the Son works through the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit works through the Word of God. So you've got a, a, an easy uh, understanding then of how things all are put together. Uh, <clears throat> so, there is one true God or Godhood, uh, and in that sense, just like there is one humanity. Uh, the Godhood or Godhead is composed of the three beings that we understand or know as the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And so, when we, these three work together as one in unity to accomplish the work of creation the work of sustaining the universe and the work of saving our souls. They work together in harmony to, uh, to bring all that about. So, uh, when we look at overall, God is a spirit, a person, his life, he's self-existent, immutable, unity, eternal, uh, and all that type of stuff all thrown in together. Mm -hmm. So, no matter what we try to, or what way we try to describe the Godhood or deity, uh, we're going to struggle. No matter what illustrations we come up with, we will never be able to explain it in full. Because in reality, a God who can create a universe is far greater than our understanding or imagination. And that's why we are called to live by faith. Okay? That should be about it. Yep. So it's short and sweet. So now you know all the answers, you'll be able to help